Hey, Russ. Yeah, Marty? You think, you wonder ever if you're a bad man? No, I don't wonder, Marty. I'm a cisgender white male. I know I'm a bad man. After the completely organic critical success of season four, we figured, why not revisit season one? Yeah, we really felt that Rust and Marty shouldn't be fighting crime, because what is crime in these modern times? They should also fight systemic oppression. It's the most evil thing I've ever seen in my life. Not me. You know the most evil thing I've ever seen is? What's that? Caucasian skin. Have you ever read the book White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo? Unfortunately, no, but I respect your spirit. I'll loan you my copy. It's on my anti-racist reading list. Much obliged. Be sure to give that back to me. White people have a habit of taking stuff that's not theirs, never returning it. Stolen land. Yeah. Man, I feel good about myself. Me too. You should. Well, we're battling systemic oppression. We actually force everybody on set to read this book, at least twice. Oh, it's great, a real page turner. We even give out pop quizzes on set, and if they can't tell us what happened, they're fired. Let's see more. Let's do it. You seem kind of strange, like you might be dangerous. Of course I'm dangerous. I'm the police. I selectively enforce laws that disproportionately affect marginalized communities, therefore perpetuating institutionalized racism. Oh. OK. Remember the riveting monologues and poetic dialogue of season one? Well, we figured this time around we would do away with all the subtext and just lecture the audience outright. I think human consciousness is a tragic misstep in evolution. I think if we were gonna do the right thing, we would stop procreating, cease farming cattle, would deny our programming, stop using fossil fuels, and walk hand in hand as brother and sister into extinction. That sounds wonderful, Russ. Would you mind telling my kids at dinner? How old are they? Seven and four. Well then, it will be my pleasure. What should I bring? They're toddlers. A storybook with hardcore gay sex, of course. You got it. Much obliged. Can I dress as a drag queen when I read to them? That was a given. It's my dinnerware. We have an understanding. We were really painted into a corner by the fact that both of our leads were not just law enforcement. I know, it's, it's difficult. They were also cis hetero males. But it was a blessing in disguise because it gave us the opportunity to bring in a girl boss of color that could emasculate and embarrass both of them at every turn. You limp pansies. Your lack of melanin disgusts me, you pasty fucks. You look like the fucking Pillsbury Doughboys. I mean, she, she, she's right. Hang on. Clapping triggers me. Can you all do spared fingers? As compelling as the first season was, it didn't have any of the digressions into gender that modern audiences are expecting. So, we changed that. Joe. 
This is a penis. Simple. But to me, it's a vagina. It's wherever the damn hell it wants to be. You are absolutely correct. I don't need you to tell me that. Sure, it's fascinating to watch a mystery unfold in front of you, but why not just tell them exactly how to think? They're not watching. We're just yip-yapping into their subconscious, telling them exactly what we want them to think. Are we on? No. Oh. There's a video type too. this tight. You might argue that we have no right to reproduce the first season. Speaking of reproductive rights, Somebody pick it up. Somebody wipe. Children can be very hard on a birth in person. Kids tend to get up very early and affect your sleep. If you get the opportunity, you should kill your baby. you she's getting rid of it you know i love abortion mm. i've paid for many and if i was pregnant i would get one myself that's powerful i know i support it? it thank you thank you very much i i can't wait to have a vagina is that how it works one thing is for sure men can get pregnant which means men can get abortions. That's why I'll be doing both this Christmas. Uh, Kwanzaa, yeah. that's what I meant. The technology that we're bringing into this season is truly amazing. AI does most of the scenes for us. We don't even have to write them or shoot them. AI just generates them on the fly. We don't even have to recast the actors. I mean, have you seen some of the stuff AI can do? It's really a miracle. I mean, have you seen the pictures of Oscar the Grouch eating Taylor Swift's I mean, it's breathtaking. The best part is all the stories have already been written. We just have to rework the characters to be avatars for our own opinions. Oh, check this out. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, good. And I hope it pisses off the fans. Yeah, me too, dude. Oh, man, that's Sizzler. That's a word I'm creating. I hope it catches on. Oh, it won't. I know. It never does. You know, there's only 12 rules for life. What's that? Peterson? How can you expect to change the world if you can't even clean your room? Shut the f up! Drop it! Morning! Well over half the welders under- I, I gotta go clean my room. So enjoy the modern retelling of True Detective Season 1. We hope you all tune in. And please follow our social medias. I'm at White Fragile Producer. And I'm at DP Payne 69. Tom is a flat circle. Every show that's ever come out is just gonna be made again. And again, this time it'll be Woker.
My pronouns are he, him. It's not trash. A PA will get it. Put it in the recycling so it doesn't kill a dolphin or one of those things. Unless people don't like dolphins now, then put it in recycling. <laughs> <laughs>